Smith, and welcome to Face Take, where I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting. And welcome to my review of the Rift Tracks VOD, The Last Slumber Party. Rift back in July of 2014, this 1988 slasher flick is chock full of pretty much every single slasher and horror trope you can think of. Annoying sexed crazed teenagers? Check. Dialogue and acting so bad that you actually start to question if anyone in the set was really a human being? Check. A party that gets crashed by a bloodthirsty killer with a ridiculous gimmick behind his preferred choice of murdering? Check. This movie is already crazy, and Mike, Kevin, and Bill just add to the madness, so let's dive right into my review of Rift Tracks, The Last Slumber Party. We open with some generic rock music as a doctor suits up and gathers his tools for that day's work. Or is he? Cut to a blonde girl in her bedroom where this supposed doctor shows up with a bloody scalpel ready to slice her. Thankfully, he's an easily scared cold-blooded killer as he flees as soon as she screams. The next day, we're treated to the scariest thing in this movie, a high school science class. We see some annoying boys and vapid smiling girls who seem to enjoy the boys' sleaziness for some reason, and they're all awaiting summer vacation start in mere moments. Once the bell rings, signaling their freedom, a trio of girls are spouting off their histories of partying and decide that for the first slumber party of the season, they should go to Linda's house since she's the girl that never gets into any trouble. We now join this power cord already in progress. DNS Productions, because we thought it was a really funny name. <laughs> for about nine seconds. Yeah. Music by First Strike, who shared a bill with Killer Dwarfs, Truck Fighter, and Scattered Hamlet at this year's Rocklahoma. And I didn't make any of that up. <laughs> We're going to a slumber party. It's going to be the last one, girl. Be sure to bring some warm pajamas and a snack to pass around. Look out! The Rock! Yeah, I, I say that a lot, too. I say, Wah! I bet they're going to that slumber party. Oh, well, it's not like it's going to be the last slumber party. OBG Diane. Not to be confused with slumber party slaughter, slumber party murder mania, or slumber party massacre one, two, or three. Or the slumber party episode of According to Jim. Um, in fact, the, well, business aside, socially, it's also... Uh, Sarah, we can't hear anything you're saying. Could you please turn down your band's demo tape? Some of you. <laughs> <laughs> Morons are so sexy. Right upset. Hey, science, come over here. Science, come here and blind me with you. <laughs> okay, at this point, the movie is intentionally ignoring us. Hello? Well, Chippy is already my favorite character. <laughs> if science and Chippy hook up, I will love this movie forever. Parents are such a drag. The last time everybody came over, Linda Campbell invited that bohemian football player from Choctaw High, and he got sick and threw up all over the floor. The bohemian so football player who stop. can't hold his when liquor. Such a slash movie for Oh, come on, Chris. What about your house? I mean, you never do anything. We could choose your house for sure. You're the good girl, well, so you'll probably die I last. Know, I could ask him. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, we're all pros at this, and it helps uh, because you're Mr. So Tyler, should we cut? Uh, well, no, I no, I, I chowed my line. Now keep rolling. She had to prompt me. Oh, and... look, look great, natural. Keep, keep going. What are slumber parties for? Besides, Tommy and Billy have snuck into a million houses before. A million houses? Are they on the FBI's most wanted list? <laughs> Next, we're in a hospital seeing the world's most blasé doctor, who happens to be Linda's father, and his nurse discussing their patients in the psych ward. And through a clumsy flashback, we see that our killer's one of his patients who needs a lobotomy and attempted to strangle the doctor when he heard the news since he doesn't want his brain chopped up. And thanks to the doctor being as uninterested in his work as he is, he doesn't even notice that the patient somehow escaped. We then get a brief scene of Linda getting a call from the most seasoned party girl of the group, Chris, who ensures Linda nothing too crazy will happen to get her into trouble. After that pointlessness, we cut back to the hospital where two of Blase's nurses discuss if they'd have sex with him despite the fact that he's married, since this will surely excite the teens in the audience watching right now. One of the nurses makes her way to the darkened bus stop alone, and I think you can all guess what's coming next. She seems so much better, Doctor. She does seem a little less anxious, doesn't she? Not that I care, because I don't. If you... It knocks most of the other patients out, but you know how strong he is. He's 
just so unpredictable. You never know how he's going to react. Poor Mr. Nolte. Mr. Thorazine. Hope you don't mind me cozying up next to you while I read your chart. It's a standard doctor thing. I need you now. I've got a bad case of loving you. So that happened. Actually, he did say something. <laughs> In the meantime, don't disturb him. Let him sleep as long as he wants. He examines all his patients from across the room. He doesn't like touching people. Uh-oh, his surgical team of Nazgul is not going to be happy. <laughs> and you're uh, never doing that again, ever, right? <laughs> right, sorry. But what? I, I I can't hear. Wait, wait. Are you suddenly in my kitchen? We aren't gonna do anything to get me in trouble, are we? Like get murdered. I mean, Tommy and Billy are. Ah, the blank, lifeless walls of the average teenage girl's room. <laughs> One scene limps to a close just as the next struggles weakly to start. Who can keep up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind getting a piece of that action, provided he'd be there. Right. Yeah, I'd like to have sex with our boss, He's a too. He's married man yeah. with a kid and everything. Oh, that's never stopped you before. Besides, I heard he's not that happily married. What better reason to do yeah. him? <laughs> well, here we are again. Want to have sex? I wonder how late it's going to be tonight. Sorry, Mr. Tyler, can I do that keep again? Keep rolling. It would only take a minute. We have 30 scenes to shoot tonight. Just keep rolling. Okay. I'm here for your copay. <laughs> My forehead mold. Oh, I love that mold. It's that damn bus getting here anyway. Oops, tough break. Well, on the bright side, now he doesn't have to ride a city bus. Later that night at Linda's, the girls are in some oversized t-shirts and short shorts that I guess count as pajamas in somebody's book, when her dad, the most uninterested person in existence, makes them turn their music down. A news bulletin pops up on the TV, telling them that bodies have been found at the bus stop, but the killer's still on the loose. Chris tries to call Tommy and Billy, two of the gross boys from their class over, but it turns out they're already there to scare the girls, tell them they're gonna go grab some underage alcohol, and that they'll be back later with Scott, a boy that apparently Linda's obsessed with, despite never really talking to him from what I could gather. The idiots head to a gas station to pick up some beers, all while discussing how easy it'll be for Scott to get Linda in only the most tasteful and respectful of ways. They then bully the smart kid from school, who they simply call Science, by basically sexually harassing him. It's... it's weird. Even weirder is the fact that Linda's dad's at said gas station despite going to bed mere minutes ago and telling the boys he's actually headed to work now despite just getting home from work. Huh. So, when girls are alone, they dance like Peanuts cartoons? I'll never understand women. <laughs> well, no wonder you didn't hear me come in. With all this racket, I don't think you'd know it if the house is burning down. Well, flubbed another line, who cares? Linda, dear, don't you think... Besides, I'm sure your mother's about ready to go to bed. There he goes, the most commanding, charismatic man ever to enter a room. Hillcrest police have reported the discovery of two brutally murdered persons behind a bus stop near Oak Ridge Memorial Hospital. Even more shocking, this is an actual a TV. An Do you know anything about this, Dr. Sickler? Law and Order, Teen well, Interrogation Unit. Well, hmm. let's go wrestle up some men folk. Quick question, what dimension does this movie inhabit? Oh, and as we call them... Tommy, you think you could quit lifting weights for one minute and answer the phone? Maybe he just went to bed or something. That'll be the day. <laughs> the day he went to bed? Chris! Tracy, what? There's somebody outside. So I immediately left Chris for dead. <laughs> oh, Meanwhile, we're gonna go grab some brews and then maybe we'll come back. Yeah, Linda. And we're gonna bring Scott back with us. <laughs> Scott! <laughs> the mere mention Why of him is hilarious. In a little more gentlemanly manner next time. <laughs> yeah, grow up, dorks. Screw you. We'll have to come up with something even better next time. Are they teenagers Dude, or 11? Keep your motors. Hey, let's stock up on some more brew before this joint closes, yeah. huh? <laughs> None of these teens are from the same town or century. I tell you, Scott, Linda's gonna be a piece of cake for you tonight. What? No, really. She's just waiting for the right guy to come along. And I know you're that guy. I mean, come on, you're Scott! Hey, check it out. There's science. 
Hey, Scientopolis! What you doing, Romeo? Yeah, his full name actually is Science tonight? Romeo Scientopolis. They're, they're not teasing. Hey, Science, Science you old sex machine! I know what instrument you're gonna be cleaning tonight. <laughs> A sousaphone! So yeah! Hey, buddy! <laughs> Well, good evening, gentlemen. Never too soon to start the old summer vacation, I suppose. Hello, doctor. Oh, also, hi, doctor. I went to bed two scenes ago. Fact, I have to go to the hospital to see a patient. Miss Sickler left me instructions in no uncertain terms to pick her up some orange juice on the way home. So I'm here getting it on my way to work. Can I get you boys anything? Hey, take care, Dr. Sickler. Tell Linda well, we said hi. I'm sure I'll be seeing you boys again soon. Oh, Director yes, gave one note for this scene, nobody oh, act like a human. <laughs> Back at the party, the girls head upstairs to call the boys, having gotten some liquor into their systems, all with their figures lurking outside. Tommy, wearing a cheap mask, climbs in the window, nearly getting his ankle sliced off by the real bad guy. After going downstairs to rag on Linda for not getting any yet, Chris and Tommy head up to Linda's bedroom to get it on themselves. And despite that being clear, Linda doesn't stop them, even though A, she doesn't want her mom to know the boys are here, and B, it's her bed that they're gonna go do unspeakable things on. Ugh. Anyway, Chris jumps in the shower while Tommy takes off his shirt in anticipation. Too bad for him, but great for us, the murderer has slipped in the house and slits his throat. Then we get a long look at Chris from the other side of the shower curtain, and it's more tedious than anything so far. She comes out looking for Tommy, but can't find his blood-soaked body, and just assumes he left her cold. When are you gonna realize that it's no fun if you don't live dangerously? Vote Ron Paul! I was getting tired of booze anyway. Let's get high. She studied at the after-school special upstairs. school of acting. getting bored enough. Oh, thank God they left. My calves are cramping like hell. Never did any harm. You know, he is kind of cute. Now you're talking. Your dumb virginity's killing our team average. <gasps> A cheap mask. Or the actual monster. With <laughs> this movie, it's impossible to know. Look at that. The effortless grace he's developed after sneaking into a million houses. So what's wrong with Billy and Scott? Past their bedtime and mommy and daddy won't let them come out and play? Not cool like they me, sitting on my friend's real. mom's Shut couch. Up. Cut it out, babe. Hey, Linda, why don't you call Scott? <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> she wants her friend Sorry, to bang Scott more than I've ever That's wanted anything really in my busy. life. You guys are calling us, love. I think we'll retire to the master bedroom. And do you have reservations? Only about my mate, dear. Attempter of all <laughs> accents, master of none. <laughs> Boy, Linda's a little weird, you know. Oh, she's okay. Plus, her mom is completely deaf, apparently. Weird. Most girls take a long, shameful shower after sex with that guy, not before. I enjoy being young Phil Sims. Well, enjoyed. Uh. Mm. Hot, exfoliating action. Wow, guys, I think they think we are finding this sexy somehow. Hmm. Hmm. It's possible, I suppose, that I could find this sexy in a universe where I also find waiting for spackle to dry sexy. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, are you finding this sexy? <laughs> Was that? Was that time to get up, Mom? Oh, sorry, guys. <clears throat> Dozed off. What? What now? It's okay. You've you've answered the question nicely. Okay. Tommy, I'm ready for my sex. Where'd the guys go? <laughs> no. Well, happy trails, partner. You don't expect to be welcome back here. Here in Cowboy Southern Plantationistan. <laughs> oh, mittens! You've killed again. Tracy decides to go upstairs, only to find that Billy snuck into the house too. They both totally miss the bloody body in the closet and get ready to soil Linda's bed themselves until Tracy also decides to put things off heading into the bathroom. The surgeon killer is behind the bed ready to slice Billy's throat when he gets up and sees someone out the window also in deadly surgeon cosplay. Whoever it is ends up killing Billy himself, tossing the body out the window and disappearing into the night, all while the original killer watches from the other side of the room. Tracy finds no trace of the murder except a scalpel, and the girls conclude it must be the boy's idea of a bad joke. The next morning, Chris steps out to get the paper, only to come back in the house, get stabbed by the boys, and see the other girls bloody and begging for help. She then jolts awake, having only been dreaming. But only for, like, the past two minutes, though, the boys are still totally dead. Do you think he might have stumbled out to his car? Well, he didn't come through here. Maybe he went to a more fun party, like, say, the Communist Party in Stalin's Russia. <laughs> You get points for trying hard. 
Richard! What happened to Richard? <laughs> Damn it, we'll never know now. Richard! Cute stuffed animal, sure. Yeah. Bloody corpse hanging upside down. Sesame Street poster. Typical girl's Stop bedroom. It. You're really me. Come on, Wint. I don't need to see George Stephanopoulos get deflowered. <laughs> this personal physician is very dedicated to the job. Okay. You okay there? How you doing? Do you have any? Hey, what are you doing here? Nobody told me you were in on this. Beat it, thing. God, now I'm gonna smell like brew for the rest of the night. Come on in, for Christ's sakes. Don't stand on the friggin' ladder all night. Director told the young actors, you should always act pissy and super annoyed with each other. Always. Oh, and dumb, too. Always dumb. <laughs> Smosages? <laughs> Glitch in the Matrix? Nah. Booze in the editor. Okay. Oh, hopeless. Hey, uh, your beer's out there, so so here, let me help you go get it. They must have gotten it out of my father's bag or something. They're so childish. Stealing what surgical tools, just minutes? like kindergartners. I don't know. He, your father's going to be home in a few minutes, and I don't want him seeing you all running around. Okay? Okay, fellow 30-something okay, women. We're just going to get... Ah, <sighs> sure had a great time at that slumber party. Sitting around bored, watching that sad little TV, getting really annoyed at my drippy friends. It's just the best. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, one month after she replaced gluten with crack. <laughs> Soundtrack now relegated to a toy accordion in the process of being destroyed by a Rottweiler puppy. Now do you get why I think Brian Eno is overrated? I do, honey, I do. This is for making me listen to him. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I'm drenched in blood and begging for help, trying to reach and grab a person's throat really brings the message home. Help me, Chris. <gasps> it was all a dream. And it's still Christmas Day. The spirits have done it all in one night. God bless us, everyone. <clears throat> and the spirits all show up and stab her. The end. Thank you. This has been a production of the Last Slumber Party Players. If you enjoyed this theatrical outing, then... Uh, and stabbed. Chris, being the ball of sunshine that she is, stomps upstairs swearing and wakes up her friends just to complain instead of going back to bed. After accidentally yelling at Linda's dad over the phone thinking it's Tommy, which has no repercussions on anything, so why are we seeing it happen? Chris, along with Tracy, head downstairs to snack while Linda tries to go back to bed. Turns out the second killer was Science, who happened to pick the exact same murder method as the original killer somehow, and right before he can murder Linda, the first killer kills him. Tracy heads back upstairs to find Linda gone, but Science is dead body in her place, only to then get caught by the murderer herself. We then get a scene of Linda's mom getting a call from her dad, which adds nothing to anything, yet here it is, still in the final cut for some reason. Just sleeping with the light on, as one does. <laughs> There's nobody up here, Chris. Unless one of the guys snuck in without us seeing him. Which they've only now, done a few a dozen times tonight, so I doubt that happened. Around here. Hello? Her quest to be irritated by literally everything yeah, is going great. Yeah, that's what I said. Who is this? Oh, who the hell you think it was, Shelly Hack? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Script written Tommy, by a computer that's you? failing the Turing test. This is why, before I turned the lights out, my kids always made me check onto their bed for Noah Wileys. One of the rare occasions Tom Selleck isn't the hairiest chest in a room. And Selleck's goons just took care of that. Hey, Linda, you left the light on in the bathroom. Also the one that's right next to me. Well, what can you do? Good night. Why don't you turn it off? Hey, Linda! Bury me with my Neil deGrasse Tyson posters! <gasps> You're not, Linda! I'd say she broke the fourth wall, but I'm not sure this movie can even afford a third wall. <laughs> I think I'll be the first one to kill myself. Besides, you don't have the time to commit suicide. Let him spend some time at this party. He'll clear up his schedule. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll be daylight. Okay, look, it's 1988. There's a 90% chance that that thing is hooked up to a clapper. Just turn it off! 
Just like two peas in a pod. Two gurgling, twitching, blood-stained peas. Good night, ladies. Chris sees the boys' car still outside and calls out to them to no avail. She heads back inside only to see poor, relatively innocent Linda has been stabbed. Does Chris head for the hills, screaming for the police or anyone that could possibly help her? Of course not! This is a Z-grade horror movie! She silently and quietly starts walking through the house looking for who knows what. The killer? More victims? I'm not really sure. She goes into the parents' room to find Linda's mom has gotten it too, and she rushes to the kitchen for a knife of her own, while Linda, not only still alive, but conscious regardless of her copious amounts of blood loss, begs her to get help. Chris continues to quietly walk through the house when a hand touches her shoulder. She immediately goes for the kill and it works! Too bad it was Scott and not the bad guy. She runs from the killer to grab another knife, can't figure out how to unlock a door from the inside because she's just that dumb, and continues her silent walking. It's strange being so near this car without the owner trying to expose himself to me. Go home, the party sucks so much that summer's been canceled. Linda, you scared the hell out of me. What's the matter? The Kool-Aid man R. Kelly'd me. People are getting murdered in this house. I better seal off all escape routes and remain inside. <laughs> oh, clown painting! So the multiple homicides aren't the most evil thing to happen in this house. Okay, good, good. Shuffle around mutely, unlike any sentient being would behave in this situation. He's in there. If it's the killer, stab me once, Please. if not twice. No, no, even better, He's zero there. times. Weird, all the books on the toilet are Wizard of Id collections. Who even owns one of those, let alone six or seven? Throat so parched, lack of orange juice. Chris, get help! That's what Jackie Chan says every time Tucker calls, begging him to do Rush Hour 4. <laughs> She doesn't want to leave the house and get help because that'd just be rude. This is how I approach our family's ham at Easter. Yeah, see this is why I need to start doing more ab crunches so that my midsection isn't so easily penetrated by knives. But my vaguely resembling Steve Jobs! Ugh. Her reaction to seeing a knife-wielding lunatic is identical to when she looks through the pudding section at the supermarket. <laughs> well, her last knife-holding walkthrough was a non-stop thrill ride, so I'm looking forward to take two. Got the popcorn out. <laughs> Senior skip day was when they were teaching the section on how doors work. Hard. Don't get it. The, the, the camera's not on me, right? I mean, the shot's over. Oh, it's still on me? Oh, crap, okay. Okay, but now it's off, right? Chris meets up with the villain in the kitchen, and even though he just killed like seven people no problem, he wasn't prepared for a ginger with a kitchen knife as she stabs him and he goes down almost instantly, leading Chris herself to pass out. The next morning, Linda's dad gets home and doesn't find any bodies as we get a quick glimpse of someone dragging him out of the house. He answers a phone call from the hospital telling him to come right back as the insane patient has escaped, and through all this, he doesn't notice that his wife is dead under their bed sheets. On his way out, he sees both the ladder and the boy's car, but doesn't even think to go back and check on his definitely not all murdered last night family. He's then killed by the supposedly dead fake surgeon at the hospital, who then drags him back to his house to drop him in his own pool for Chris to find, and then he slits Chris's throat too. Cut to Chris at her house alive and well as the entire party has just been her nightmare. Which I guess makes her nightmare from earlier a nightmare within a nightmare? Okay. But apparently her nightmares are more like prophecies as it turns out a maniac did escape the institution, does head to Linda's house, and presumably does kill all the girls after all. What an uplifting piece of cinema. By the way, guys, the director said one of his major influences was Halloween. Well, suspenseful movie. Not a bad thing to... No, not it, the movie. He meant the Halloween. He fell down some stairs, hit his head, and forgot how movies worked. <sighs> Is this a knife? Well, now that I look at it, it just looks kind of weird. <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> She's part fainting goat. Wow. 
Boy, after a hard night's work, it's sure great to have an alive family to come home to. Hey, honey, boy, what a night. I am just dead. Guy's only slightly more talented at walking than Rod from Birdemic. This is Nurse Taylor on the sixth floor. Uh, actually, I'm on an elevator, so now I'm on the fifth floor. Fourth. Okay, we're stopping. I don't care which floor you're on. Don't do anything until I get there. I'm leaving right now. Are you sure we shouldn't do anything? You could kill a family or... Don't do anything! For some reason. Guy with a surgical mask on at a mental hospital. Nothing suspicious there. Ugh, you slit half my throat. My favorite half, too. Still, much cleaner than most public pools. Here, let me just do... I got a little idea here. There. What, what do you think? What, what do you think? I guess I'm really out of it. God, Trace, I had this terrible nightmare. And there's not a chance in hell it'll turn out not to be a nightmare after all. Just wanted crazy. to get ahead of that. This is Nurse Taylor at the hospital. Uh huh. A very dangerous patient that your father has been treating just escaped from here. Uh huh. Your father and the police believe he may be headed there. Go lock all the doors. Your father is on the way. Sounds good. <laughs> His plan relies on the fact that no one he meets has peripheral vision. Or any vision, apparently. And with that, the movie starts over. Then ends up being the dream of an autistic kid looking into a snow globe. And freeze. And voiceover that says, brought to you by Acme Scalpel and Surgical Mask Supply. Acme, when you really need to hold a scalpel while wearing a surgical mask and stare into a camera for an hour or so. This is a classically over-the-top, terrible slasher flick that's absolutely perfect for this spooky time of the year. The riffs are fantastic, as this movie gives the guys an abundance of great material to work with, with so many beautifully cliché and utterly stupid moments. If you're looking for a goofily bloody movie for this year's Halloween party, The Last Slumber Party should definitely be it. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and special thanks to all my terrifyingly great Patreon supporters, including Jackie Ball, Kevin Atta, and Victor Cordova. I'm gonna try to get one more good Halloween review in before the end of the month, probably with MST3K's Hobgoblins episode. As long as my voice holds out with this nice little head cold I'm getting. Hobgoblins is an episode I've wanted to cover for a while, much like Werewolf, so it'll be fun to tackle that one. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys later. Who's going to the after party?